got the risk warning on the screen here. I'm just going to skip through that. This, of course, is our weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. As you might be aware, markets are crashing around our ears at the moment. <coughs> so, a couple of uh, insights that we put on today, the, the, the morning and, and mid-morning note will be <coughs> insightful in terms of, oh, well, hopefully, insightful in terms of some of the, the causes and the possible effects here. But um, very broadly speaking, you know, this, uh, this route in China is extending across markets and um, the the Dow Jones actually fell 500 points just in, in one day on Friday and it's it's following through again today and we're looking like the the Dow as we trade at the US 30 down down in and around a thousand points <coughs> in just over a couple of days so markets are really falling off a cliff here and, uh, and we've been indicating in the chart forum and on these webinars you know, some of the kind of bearish divergence in the RSI, some of the fact that, um, you know, the new highs are barely being made, referenced a little bit, some some places you'll read elsewhere, is that breadth in markets have got has got very low, so that means particularly, particularly in U.S. markets, where it's really just been stocks like Apple, and more recently, Netflix and the like, that have been carrying most of the gains in, in U.S. stock markets, and Apple... Apple disappointed in the last earnings release. That's been dropping, and uh, you know that combined with this uh, devaluation of the Chinese currency um, is, um, you know, it's really, you know, obviously um, ahead of expectations. Still, that the Fed may raise interest rates in September. You know, markets are crashing. That said, um, the U.S. dollar is actually seeing some pretty hefty falls today. Dollar yen, having not long ago been at 125, um, pushing into new record, uh, new, new multi-year highs, is now actually below 120. Is it's fallen 500 pips, and I can bring up the chart for you right now. That's been in about a week. Now look at these declines here. So we can see, you know, dollar yen tends to quite closely track uh, U.S. Treasuries, but also U.S. stock markets. And um, you know you can see it's it's certainly kind of following suit. We've broken the low from July. We've also broken the rising trend line that have been sort of supporting this recent consolidation slash kind of rising channel. And um, you know it's looking um, looking pretty dubious. And uh, you've probably read and heard a lot about the 200-day moving average. Uh, it's a very simple indicator, but a lot of people lose it. Uh, a lot of people will use it. Um, to, uh, well, to actually, before I carry on, it, is everyone hearing me okay? Getting some message here about losing the sound. Is that across the board? Sound coming in and out. Is that? Uh, okay, I'm getting some other messages that it's okay, so I'm just going to carry on. I think maybe uh, the old, um, you know, computer restart if it keeps getting bad um, so difficult technical situation but as I had mentioned you know there is there's fears about a, a September rate hike um, but you know the this drop in the dollar is um, is suggestive of the fact that um, you know based on this latest Fed statement that actually the, the Fed is a bit worried about hiking interest rates and you know it's, it's it's sometimes it's difficult which way to to know how to turn in these markets you know sometimes the prospect of a higher inter higher interest rates is deemed bad sometimes good you know my take on in this situation is that <coughs> you know we're worried about global growth the growth in china is is clearly uh, really slowing down now we have the official figure that says that gdp growth is in and around 7% you know a lot of people don't trust that and there's some sort of external data, for example, um, today, um, sh sh shipping rates um, were, were released. They've fallen 60% in three weeks. So shipping coming from China going into Europe, a bit of a sort of external data that's a bit more trustworthy, showing there's a major slowdown taking place there. China looks like it's in real trouble. But you couple that with the Federal Reserve 
are clearly not willing to raise interest rates even by 0.25% from 0%. Just that small amount they're not willing to do because they have that little confidence in the strength of the US economy. So, you know, real concerns about growth and, um, you know, it's feeding into some big declines. So let's have a look at some of these equity markets. <coughs> um, go start with the UK. So the FTSE, as as we speak, is is trading at the lowest level since 2012. Step back and think about that for a second. We were pushing into record highs after the general election. We're now at the lowest level in three years. <coughs> you know, in two and a half years, uh, thereabouts. So before we get too carried away, I mean that that's certainly um, pretty you know, pretty negative for the market, but a lot of that took place last week. We broke some significant levels last week. You know, I had, if you scroll back a couple of chart forums, you know, I had this, this triangle pattern pegged and did project that actually the market could drop down to the uh, the lows and this kind of rising trend line that we have through the, the January, no, sorry, the June 13 and October 2014 lows, but it's, it's gapped through there as of today and now pushing into these uh, the lowest levels since December 2012. But as you can see, you know, you know, definitely room for uh, for discomfort, definitely room for concern, uh, to say the least at the moment. But we are still only around these levels, which can get kind of taken out to a small extent and then recover again. You know, levels aren't perfect. We are still in a sideways market now. The decline last week is similar to the decline that we saw in December. So, and we, you know that got all um, all but retraced the following week. I don't know if that's going to happen this time because we barely edged into new record highs, and now the same thing's happening again. So, I think it may be different this time. But just be aware of the fact that we still, generally speaking, are not quite in a kind of bearish trend. We've certainly done a few things that would suggest we're turning that way, breaking below the 200-day moving average, breaking below this rising trend line that started back in 2011, and this more horizontal trend line, which we can see people are respecting because it's gapped below it. Um, so certainly a few indications there, but you know the fact that we're kind of above this, uh, in and around this low from June 2013, means there could be some people willing to buy in of what they deem to be the bottom of the trading range. Of course, at some point, there's just going to be short covering. Um, you know, if there is a little bounce in the market, some people do decide to buy in a bit. Anyone who's short, particularly in the short term, they'll cover those shorts and we'll get a bit of a bounce in the market. We're certainly not there yet, though. Um, if we do scroll down a bit here, just want to kind of show you how sharp these declines are. <coughs> now, to me, we're at quite a significant support level here, so it's um, you know it's a, it's a risky proposition going short into the market. But on the other hand, I think you've got to decide um, you know if you're if you're following this trend, there's not too much room for for um, catching a bounce. You know, I don't think you know if this if this downtrend is going to continue. Uh, you know, it's a rout right now, so it's it's almost vertically down. So, you know, don't go expecting a, a bounce back to the previous lows or back to the, the previous peaks for a, you know, a nice value area to sell in with. This is not a, you know, nice um, uh, gradually curving downtrend. This is just vertically down. So if you want to participate, then, um, you know, you're going to have to get in fairly aggressively or you'll miss any more of the move um, if you have done so already. But just be aware that, uh, you know, we're at the 6,000 level in the FTSE, some similar kind of levels in the other indices that I'll show you in a minute. So just be aware that you know you're going to have to jump out of those shorts pretty aggressively, pretty quickly. You know, just be a bit nimble here. Um, you know, assess the volatility of the situation. The volatility is extreme down, so expecting some nice curved move up and down again is probably not reasonable. Now let's have a look at the. Um, the Germany 30. Now the FTSE, you know, that kind of to me didn't go crazy, didn't go crazy high this year, made new records, 
um, and hasn't dropped through um, you know a few technical signs but still kind of broadly in that kind of sideways range that we mentioned that the, the DAX or as a Germany 30 as we trade it different proposition altogether we saw this huge rally started around October last year when we started to get good clues that the European Central Bank was going to start quantitative easing and most of this rally was pretty much preempting the final announcement which took place in March I forget the exact day we pretty much went up for another month just about and when they actually started the quantitative easing that almost called the top and now we're down back through 10,000 and um, if we find the the first of January uh, it's he down here oh, no, am I, am I? we're basically there you know we're basically at you know at break even for the year we were up 20 percent in the uh, the Germany 30 20 was 20 percent plus gains for the year off the the back of quantitative easing happening quantitative easing is still happening it's still scheduled to happen until September next year for so for over a year we're still supposed to be getting this QE but the the, the benefits of it have just been completely wiped out <coughs> So technically, um, with, you know, the fact that we've we've, we've you know that we've gapped down through ten thousand, it's it's it's, a, it's very similar to the, the the kind of the trend line that we had in the in the FTSE, and obviously just all the after that after Shanghai declined by eight point five percent today, after declining twelve percent last week, um, or just all you know other other global markets have just you know they've positioned significantly lower and or gapped down but it it's not to me uncoincidental that we gapped through these significant support levels and for the DAX the, the Germany 30 it's this 10,000 round number that took a good long time to break through finally did and now we're back down through it again so it's supposed to be what was resistance becomes support still could be remember these the zones are not perfect but at the moment not looking too good on that front in and around this area is the 61.8% retracement of the rally since October 2014. Um, if we look like we're completely giving up here, then there is the lows from December 2014 and January 2015 um, that corresponds with the, the next FIB level down. So again, if we zoom in a bit, you know, you're not going to, you know, you can sort of see the gap taking place on the uh, the daily chart to some extent here, um, but you're not going to be able to really pinpoint declines based on the daily chart here. You're going to have to drop down a bit to the lower time frames. And again, you know, as with all these markets, it's, it's just vertically downwards. So, you know, if you're of the opinion that this this route's not over, you know, we're um, we're rolling over into a bear market that many people have been predicting since the bull market first started <coughs> then um, you know be tactical you know you can always short on a break of the low of course it could be a false break that's always the risk with breakout trades or you can just think well okay we've had a bit of a bounce you know we bounced for a couple of hours and now we're back down again just you know short in the belief that the uh, the bounce is over <coughs> But again, I just think if you are looking for some decent rebounds, you know, in the Germany 30, we could get a fill of that opening gap back up to 10,000. It's possible. Um, but um, but much more than that, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, if we do get a bigger bounce than that, then I think people will just start buying into it and we'll just, you know, we'll just ramp much higher. So it's, it's probably not time again for nice rounded declines and inclines it's, it's kind of rapid volatile movements at the moment so again just um, be aware of this you know the, the extent of the moves that are taking place you know one one indicator that we've got in the system here is the uh, the ATR the average true range not something I typically use a lot I try and keep the um, analysis of the chart fairly simple but uh, oops, I'm looking at overlays. Uh, do do. There we are. Typically use a 14 period, 
But here, this is basically telling us the volatility. So here, nice curved, da 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 da, da all quite 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 relaxed down here, very low, and then suddenly the amount the the market's moving each day is is huge. Look at that ramp up there. So having this indicator on your screen can give you a little idea, um, you know, when there's periods of high volatility are, and you know you've got to adjust your stop loss and um, adjust your entry technique accordingly. And that's the, often the key to um, successful trading is not being too rigid in the way you do things, being aware of the different situation. Are we sideways trading? Are we, are we, in, a, are we in a trend? How fast is the trend? So let's get over to the, the US markets now. This was the, um, did we already look at this? I certainly mentioned it. You know, this is the Dow Jones. And so I had been highlighting the fact that, yes, we're in this sideways trading range and, and, to, and to watch out for the 17,000 level, but we are making uh, lower highs and lower lows and so the bias was down and so this this gradual sideways trend within the range as I mentioned here has just turned into complete capitulation and we've literally lost a thousand points in a couple of days <coughs> um, but the break of this this declining trend line plus the break of this RSI line that I'd mentioned you know that was a good little entry point down there if anyone's still short good for you don't get shaken out too early but obviously 16,000 is a big big round number so we could get a bit of a rebound um, okay let's um, we had touched on currencies a little bit here um, if, it, if there is any currency that anyone wanted to discuss specifically then please let me know but otherwise I'm going to kind of go for the kind of defaults here and I think well, yeah, we showed we showed dollar yen, didn't we? But the other interesting one here is euro dollar. Now we've been highlighting this possible situation for a while. You know, we had the declining RSI trend line broken, then we had the price trend line broken. We had a retracement, a touch on the trend line, and then a rebound, and it's just been all up from there. And we've, um, you know, we were closed above the previous peak here, and, uh, and now we've actually broken. Um, above this May high, and so that puts us. What you'll hear said in the in the press kind of comments is at the highest level since uh, February 2015. So um, yeah, basically six month highs in the euro. <coughs> A lot of people calling for parity. Uh, we weren't here, uh, and, uh, and that ha and it hasn't happened. <coughs> and now we're back up to 115, and it was such a sharp decline. You know this this decline. If you ever um, are able to show an inverted euro dollar trade juxtaposed against a uh, the Germany 30 or even just as they are you'll see that basically if you invert it they're very similar the the DAX has been rallying and the euro has been collapsing <coughs> and uh, it's part of the reason that European equities are falling so fast is because the euro is basing out and that was pretty much the main advantage to quantitative easing is that it was causing a weaker euro and helping European exporters. So this is a pretty big level that we're at and so we could get a we could get a false break here, one fifteen. A lot of people will be selling in this vicinity, so don't be surprised if we see a bit of a drop back. But I think the dynamics have changed in the Euro here. And um I do anticipate us moving higher. And like I said, it's been such a sharp decline. There's not really an obvious <coughs> excuse me, uh not an obvious area of uh, of resistance here to me the last kind of serious consolidation that we had was up here in the sort of 122 50 types uh, type area so that's a distinct possibility obviously got the 120 round number handle in the time being and I think if you <coughs> if we just use this horizontal uh, consolidation area as uh, as a way to project where the breakout might lead us we can just cap we can just show the height there. Do one click on the bottom, one click on the top, drag it tr across to the breakout area, and then the 100%. So that height up here takes us to around one, a bit above 121. So 
not to say that we're going to make it there, but um, that you know that's um, the kind of calculation a few people will be doing and the projection a few people will be putting across. You could obviously be do it a bit more aggressively and extend it down to um, <coughs> you know the low, and that put us back up here near that um, near that peak in this consolidation zone. That's around 125. So again, let's not get too carried away. Could get a false break and move back into the trading zone. Um, you know, not a ba not a bad risk or broad uh, trade to short back into the zone here. But to me, it doesn't quite look like that's that's going to hold. But that's certainly not to say it can't. Let's have a look at sterling. Sterling has been well, sterling was ahead of the pack here, uh, the British pound. <coughs> In terms of rallying, <coughs> um, obviously we've got our own possibility of hiking interest rates here. 157 has been sticky for a while, but today could be the one to take us higher based on that euro dollar movement. You know, we've had these gradual higher closes. It's been it's been difficult to do, but we're we're kind of pushing higher at the moment, and I think shorting the top of this range that trade is is almost done. Generally, we're seeing higher highs <coughs> if you scale out to the kind of weekly chart. You know, I think the way you got to look at this is yes, we've had a steep correction because we didn't get much higher on that, and it's been a, it's, this is more of a kind of wavy uh, consolidation type move higher. <coughs> so not like the uh, just outright downtrend that we've seen in um, in equities and also in oil, which we'll have a look at in a second. Um, so, you know, I, I I tend to think that this consolidation is going to just take us up to the high. And, well, we, you don't know if it can break the high, but I would imagine taking us up to the 61.8. <coughs> I had a request here for, do, uh, for pound yen, so yeah, I'll sneak that one in uh, now. I haven't got that on my list, but I will get it higher. So, pound yen in effect moving the same way dollar yen has been. It's a bit more of a complicated situation with um, euro yen because the euro dollar is um, seeing such strength. The pound is as well, but not as much strength. And um, there, the yen is is rallying pretty hard as a sort of safe haven. And also because it kind of tracks alongside uh, U.S. Treasuries, which are, um, for the most part, being bid up as a safe haven as well. And because U.S. markets equities are, are going down, and it tends to kind of track that, as well as the um, the Nikkei in Japan. So, <coughs> you know, basically, in the short term, obviously. It's uh, it's turned into a downtrend. So you know, I'm, when I'm saying short term, I'm talking sort of sub one day. You know, the, the break of this line, much as in dollar yen, has taken us into a short term downtrend, and I don't really see that um, that ending anytime soon. Possibly here, where we saw the break up, um, um, anywhere in this kind of zone between these two levels, we could find some support coming into the market. So just as you're going short. Just be aware as we get into that zone. That's just the way to play it. The trend is down. Um, we failed to make a new high. It looks a bit like a double top. So a good chance we'll break the neckline, head all the way lower. Um, but um, but be aware of the fact that Japan are still doing quantitative easing. We're seeing that policy getting unstuck a little bit at the moment. But um, But nonetheless... Don't get too carried away before we break this uh, low and confirm the break of the double top. Um, because until then, we're still kind of still um, in a in a trading range. No, the, the not made a new high uh, as of yet. Not made a new low. Um, yep, I will certainly have a look at gold. Um, Going to have a look at commodities now. Now, gold has been 
the um, it's been the standout performer of late. Um, it's it's being sold off today. The you know the general excuse for that is that um, you know basically everything's being thrown out. Even the, even the quality assets that have been performing well. Gold for the most part has not been performing that well. If you know if you look back the past few weeks, but just um, in the last couple of weeks, it's really outperformed. Uh, but it's just being sold off alongside everything today. So technically, a bit of an explanation as to why we're stuttering a bit in gold. We basically ran into, you know, this was uh, in this in this area that we are right now. We have the 61.8% retracement, the declining trend line here, and um, this sort of little yeah, this. I mean, there's a declining trend line here, but in and around this kind of area, I kind of pinpointed this as where we kind of tried to break through a few times, came up, tested, rolled over, and um, that seems to be the level that's doing it at the moment. It just corresponds with this um, July 10th peak. So, see how we do today. It could end up being an inside day, and so then that's a candlestick pattern that you can trade on a breakout. So, you know, if we get a break through the high from an inside day pattern, then, um, you know, that could be your trigger to, to go long on a break of that rising trend line. Um, just be aware, you obviously, like any breakout, you can get false breakouts. And equally, same to the downside. You know, this this tr rising, tr uh, declining trend line could, could be capping this advance that we're, we're having in gold. I mean, keep in mind, this short-term trend has been strongly higher, um, but overall, if we scale back to a sort of weekly type chart, trend's still officially downwards. Um, you know, whichever low you want to take, this low, this low, we're making a lower low, we're making lower highs, and we're still well below uh, these uh, the moving averages. And we've got this this big old trend line to come in up above here. But if we do break this this declining blue trend line, you know, there's a good chance we go up and test this um, this pink line again, which which is not far off of the um, the peak. If we just drop down again, you know, these these kind of come in together. Um, the peak from May and the declining trend line. So that's a kind of confluence of possible resistance. So if we get a break here, um, you know, tr try and hold on unless there's signs of a real rollover. Don't you know? Don't give up at any small retracement, try and, try and target that kind of area that a lot of people may be. One of the best trends in the market right now, all prices, just continually down. Tempting to try and pick the bottom here, but you know, this is one of these markets where um, hopefully you've learnt the lesson. And it's a great lesson. It's a great market to learn that lesson. Um, you know, even at these multi-year lows, um, yeah, we've we've it's it's not even seen a daily pullback from there. It's just dropped straight through. So, obviously, as we first entered this this kind of area of possible demand, we did see a bit of a consolidation take place. But once we saw that drop through it. You know, that's when we knew we were done and dusted and, and we're declining down here. Um, and we're probably heading for those 2008 lows. I think we need a monthly chart to see that. <coughs> there we go. So this is where we're probably heading. And um, there's been talk um, around today have mentioned, have mentioned the possibility of a, an emergency OPEC meeting. Um, that obviously would change the dynamic somewhat if OPEC just completely fall back on their, their tactic uh, of not cutting production. Um, you know, it hasn't really worked so far. Uh, U.S. oil production has remained kind of flat, um, even though the price of oil has halved. And so, you know, their, their attempt to kind of flush the U.S. out of the market um, basically hasn't worked so far. And if they give up now, they've basically given up before they even had a chance to work. I don't think they will um, cut production, but there's going to be some political infighting amongst OPEC. Um, Saudi Arabia, um, they've just had to raise money in the bond market for the first time in several years because 
they are trying to finance quite a large budget to keep all the population happy, um, but they haven't got the uh, high price of oil to, to fund that budget anymore, so they're having to actually raise money in debt markets. Not all the other um, uh, Middle Eastern countries are able to do that, and actually uh, are more reliant on higher oil prices. So countries like Iran, who have just started increasing production again after the sanctions being lifted, um, or is, is set to at least, you know, they are going to be one of the big uh, oppositions to Saudi Arabia um, on, on this policy. And so it's not out of the realms of possibility that we see an OPEC price cut, um, production cut. But it literally, I think that that's the only thing I really see holding up oil prices um, is an OPEC cut. Anything else, uh, I think we're dropping through this low of uh, 35 in uh, in Brent, and uh, you know maybe down to 30 beyond there. You know, if we call this a um, a bear flag, which it basically is, then we could be just much much lower prices. Um, I don't think we'll get down to ten dollars a barrel, but you know nothing's out of the realms of possibility. Trend affirmatively down right now. Quick look at silver. Silver's been a confusing one because it's it's sort of been trading. Some days it trades like gold. Some days it trades like copper. So it did break out like gold, but it's been collapsing alongside Chinese markets, the same as, as copper has been. Now, just something to watch out here, I've highlighted in the chart for him, is we now have, um, you know, there's not been a trend preceding it, so I can't really call it a double top, but basically resistance has held from the previous peak, and we've got uh, quite a significant bearish divergence here. So if we see a break of this sort of 1470 zone, where we've had a couple of quite strong bounces, to me that probably opens up the path to breaking 1440 and pushing into new lows again. So, for now, it's a sideways market um, with possibilities um, at 14.70 and 14.40 for a bounce. But to me, if 14.70 breaks, I suspect 14.40 will as well. Um, Coming into the end of the, uh, the webinar here, but I will just since I just mentioned copper, I'll, I'll show you that. And copper, <coughs> big industrial metal, and basically has been um, been crashing alongside Chinese markets just because China was at least still is, but it's 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 it's, it's declining. The the biggest consumer of commodities and its housing boom, uh, which is stalled, um, was the source of demand for uh, for copper. I'm sure a lot of you know that longer term story. But um it's not happening. <coughs> maybe maybe a symbol to call it a day. I hope that was useful uh to everyone. Good luck with trading this week. A lot of volatility, <coughs> a lot of opportunity. Um so I hope you're able to take advantage. Jasper Law signing out.